Hey everybody, welcome back. This is DJ here, and we are going to be looking at part three of Underwater Scenes in Blender. If you haven't seen parts one and two yet, what the heck are you doing here? You can't eat your dessert first. Don't you want to make a super cool scene like this within the LuxCore engine? I mean, who wouldn't, right? So while you're looking at parts one and two, you might want to also check out my tutorials on the LuxCore engine, which I have quite a few of them, so you can check those out. I'm going to have a link in the video description down below. And if you could take a moment to please like and subscribe to the channel, it's really easy for you and it's really great for me. So it's a win-win for everybody. And we also have a Discord server. So if you have any questions or anything like that, you can join the Discord. And if you'd like to help offset the cost of making these videos, like the people scrolling at the bottom of the screen here, please follow the link in the video description below. So let's just call this good for the moment. Of course, you could tweak this and change this and add little fish effects, or not effects, but little fish simulations and stuff like that all through here. But let's go ahead and save this, and I'm going to show you guys some cool techniques on how to render this. So first of all, as always, change your uh, resolution to twice the size of your final. So we're going to change this to a 200, okay? And then what you'll want to do, let's actually hit, uh, let's change this to solid and save this. What you want to do here is for your light paths, let's change the total light paths to 16. Let's just add a little bit more and put 16 on the specular. Uh, light tracing here, let's change this to 100 because I want a little bit more light tracing. So if I go back here, look at this in the rendered view, you might have already changed this to 100, but let's just check and see how this is coming with the 100. Sometimes there's an error that occurs with this. Yeah, see how it gets like really dark like that? Let's try this again. Let's see if maybe we can resolve that a little bit. Sometimes these errors show up and it might help out just to change this to like a 90%, but let's see if we can get it to work with 100. Nope, so let's change this to a 90. You can see that it's dealing with that darker area there a little bit better. Yeah, so that looks really cool. You can see the really neat looking effects come straight down through there. It looks really, really cool. Um, and I'm gonna actually adjust the lights um, to get the DJ, uh, the, the text looking a little bit more lit up. So give me just a second here and let's see if we can make this look a little bit more uh, lit up. So I'm going to speed up this area. Okay, yeah, so basically I just uh, changed a little bit of the size, changed the... Uh, the amount of power that one of them was uh, off shooting. And it looked like it might've been just underneath the waves there. So that's part of the issue with having the bounding box on the ocean is that you might uh, have trouble seeing if it's actually um, through the waves or above the waves. But I kind of pulled it up a little bit and you can see there that there's that really cool effect happening there. So it looks kind of neat. So let's save this and let's go back to our rendering. So let's go over here. I'm gonna change, change this to solid. Go over here, change this to GPU. And let's go down to the devices and just make sure that, click the update device list, make sure that you have your GPU there if you're using it. And color management, just keep this all the same. I'm using Filmic, that's what most people use, so just Filmic, sRGB. Don't use a lookup right now because we're gonna change the contrast in a minute. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on the denoiser, OIDN. And for the sample, we're gonna change this from progressive to cache friendly. Now, progressive is good if you're doing a first pass, um, but let's let's uh, put cache friendly. And for the light paths here underneath the clamping, we're gonna turn this on. Um, and actually, let's leave this off for now, and I'm gonna show you something cool that you can do. So let's leave the clamping off, and I'm gonna hit save, and we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna render this out. Okay, so just really quick, for those of you who might be having some trouble, and before you really uh, you know, do your final render, um, I was noticing that I was running into some issues where it just wasn't rendering. And it's probably that it was just taking a long time to build the um, actual like render file with all the uh, subdivisions that I had on here with this and with the um, the ocean here with the 30 and everything. Um, so I was running into an issue and I went to render um, where it was just taking too long for me. And so I just take, took this uh, ground plane here and I just changed this to a one. It should look fine. If you wanted, you could add like a bump map over the like surface of this to make it look a little bit more textured. And if, I've, if I was doing this for real, I would, you know, bake this in and remove a bunch of the stuff that's not seen in the environment. But we're not going to do that uh, for this one. I'm just going to turn this down here 
and we're going to render this out. So if you were running into issues, that's you know probably what it was. Um, and just to remind you, I took the light tracing here and I changed it to like a 90. Okay, so um, turn the denoiser on, light paths set to 90% for the light tracing, GPU using my RTX 3090 here. And for the samples, we're not going to put a halt condition. We're just going to let it run until we're ready. So um, let's go ahead and hit F12 and do it correctly this time. Okay, so we let this go for about, you know, three minutes and 40 seconds or something. So let's hit escape there. And uh, this is the result. Looks okay. Like I said, you'll probably want to go in here and add some bump maps to this stuff, add some cool normals, add some more stuff into the scene and make it look really, really nice. This is just to, you know, really quick show you how you can do this. So let's go ahead and go into the compositing tab and let's turn on the use noise up, uh, use nodes up here separate this out let's zoom out go to view over here on the right and we will um, turn on uh, control shift left click here turn on uh, the viewer here i have node wrangler installed that's how i was able to do that um, but you could just create a viewer node and hook it up there click the fit button there and so here's our image um, i'm just going to leave it in the back if you want a more detailed um, idea on how i do this sort of thing you can see the last part of my ring tutorial series so i'll put a, a card up here so you can check it out but if we go here shift a to add um well, let's first take a look through the denoised okay if you look through the denoised you can see that it looks very fake okay um real underwater has little particles and stuff floating around so the noise the noisy image here actually helps uh, make it look a little bit more realistic so if we go in here and we add a color mix we can actually choose how much we want to have in here so if i go here Take this image and pipe it into there, um, and then take the denoised and pipe it into there. Control left click here, and then we could take the factor and just move this to maybe a 0.5 or something, or you know, however, wherever you think is going to work for you, you can add that noise back in by just mixing those values together. Now, the next thing that I want to do here is I want to actually change how the color balance is. So I'm going to go in here, add this color balance. And this is the part that I go over a little bit more detail, but I'm just going to do some, you know, bare minimum stuff. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm going to take this down right here. Hold shift so you can more easily control this. Hold shift to pull this uh, and left click and drag to pull this up here. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just going to be holding shift, left clicking and dragging this stuff. And there's going to be a little bit of an issue with the voice um, here. So I'm just going to kind of quickly go through this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing, but um, I won't have any voiceover for this part, okay? So that right there is going to add a little bit of contrast to the scene. Then what we can do is we can hold shift and left click and drag around here to change the coloring of the film stock. So you can see that you can really dramatically change the overall coloring by just holding shift, left clicking and dragging all around the color wheels here and just seeing what you can get. Now the next thing that I want to show you is how we can throw a really cool kind of like dusty filter over the top with some uh, with some kind of like cool glow effects. So if I hit Shift A here, add a filter, and add a glare, we can take the image, pipe it into here, Control Shift Left Click through the glare node, and we're going to change this from streaks to fog glow, and change from medium to low. And you can see there that there's these little bright points of light. You see that right there? Um, let me see if I can zoom this in. So you can see that right there, this little bright point of light. And if I change this from low to high, you can see that it took a little bit longer. But you can see that there's still that little bright point right there. We can change this to medium and see what happens. You can see that it kind of shows up a little bit more there. And what you can do is you can actually take this add a color mix take your colored image here and put it into the top part of the mix node here let me zoom in so you can see so take the top part of the image plug plug it in right there to the top whoops and then the bottom here you can take the glare put it right in there let's view control shift left click through the mix 
change it from mix to add, and then you can control how much of that is actually showing. And what's happening, you can see the whole thing kind of like lit up a lot quicker. If we control shift left click and look through the glare node, you can see that kind of the whole image is here. And that's because the mix is set to zero. But if we change this to a one, we can see the glow map. See that right there? That's basically everything that has a glow effect to it. And now when we look through the add, we're just going to see those added particles. So you can see down in here, if we offset this a little bit here so you can check it out, you can see that there's these little bright points that are kind of all throughout the image. And if we change that to a high, it has just a little bit of a touch of this kind of like otherworldly sort of glow filter effect over the top of these little dust particles, which can be cool depending on um, how well you use it and stuff like that. So just a little bit of a cool effect that you can throw into there. And that will basically depend on the clamping that I said we were going to ignore. Now, if you don't really want to add that, you can click on the clamping and then you can change the brightness level to be whatever it is that you want to be. 10 is usually what um, like Blender Cycles is usually set to for this type of thing. But um, you can see here that that's basically the value to kind of reduce all of these little bright points. But I do think that it kind of adds a little bit of fun to the scene by adding those little bright points all over the place. So that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you're able to follow along and get a really cool, um, at least a tester scene out so that you can work on it to um, you know make it a lot better. Uh, again, this was just to show you kind of like the idea behind creating this underwater effect and scene. Um, but it's not, you know, uh, by any means a finished uh, image. You should work on creating something really unique and really interesting. Um, you know, make some cool items, make a better looking ground and all that kind of stuff. If you like the video, please like it and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff I make. Again, the file will be available for my patrons so if you want it and you're a patron just let me know through the patreon page and i can send it to you and hopefully you get a really cool underwater scene and i will see you guys next time on dj tutorials